Hello, hello, welcome everyone. Um, so today we're gonna be talking about differential reinforcement of other behavior. This is still part of chapter uh, 15 on differential reinforcement. So we talked about DRA or differential reinforcement of alternative behavior in the last lecture. And today we're gonna be talking about differential reinforcement of other behavior or DRO. The next lecture, the lecture on Wednesday, I'll be talking about differential reinforcements of low rates of behavior, and that will complete uh, the chapter on differential reinforcement. So we talked about DRA last class, and we talked about identifying the reinforcer for the problem behavior, and then delivering that reinforcer. Now, instead of contingent upon problem behavior, which what was happening in the natural environment, preserving the reinforcer to be delivered contingent upon an appropriate behavior that could be in the form of a communication attempt, right? We call that functional communication training. Um, and we also um, talked about how sometimes if the behavior that you're trying to reinforce is incompatible with the problem behavior, would we'll refer to this as DRI or differential reinforcement of incompatible behavior. Another kind of differential reinforcement here doesn't rely on teaching or reinforcing an appropriate behavior, but just any other behavior that is not the problem behavior. Therefore, it is called differential reinforcement of other behavior. So essentially what you have is a reinforcer, often the reinforcer that has been identified as maintaining the problem behavior, is now delivered for the absence of the problem behavior for a specified period of time. So essentially it's as simple as, as long as the problem behavior didn't occur for a specified amount of time, we are going to deliver the reinforcer. So we have to wait a certain amount of time with no problem behavior for the reinforcer to be delivered. Now, some people can refer to this or may refer to this as reinforcement for non-responding. Of course, the non-responding here is not engaging in problem behavior. So if you don't engage in the problem behavior, reinforcement will follow. Or another way of talking about this is to say that we're gonna deliver the reinforcer contingent on the problem behavior not occurring. So as long as the problem behavior doesn't occur, the reinforcer will be delivered. Now, let me give you an example from an article that was published in 2015 by a colleague of mine, uh, Dr. Jennifer Austin, who used to be a professor at California State University, Fresno, or Fresno State many years ago, and then she moved to Wales, to the UK. So she now, uh, she's now a professor at the University of South Wales in their behavior analysis program. As a matter of fact, a great behavior analysis program. Okay, so this study was actually a study on validating a trial-based functional analysis, a specific kind of experimental functional analysis that I didn't talk to you much about it, but I did post an article about different kinds of functional analysis that if you're curious, you can take a look at. But um, just to, to give you an idea uh, what she was dealing with. So she was dealing with uh, uh, several children in a typical classroom. So typically developing kids in their classrooms. So this is an example of one of the participants of the study. So here's Jacob, he's a five-year-old boy, and the problem behavior that was occurring quite consistently is what they defined or, or referred to as calling out, defined as taking, uh, talking in a raised voice to teachers or peers without permission. And in this case, it would be without raising his hand or being called on. So Jacob was just talking all the time, raising his voice to the teachers without um, you know, any permission. So what they did in the study, remember this was a study in, on trial-based functional analysis. They were trying to evaluate this kind of functional assessment and to identify the reason why the problem behavior was occurring. So trying to identify the function of the problem behavior. Then of course, once they identify the function, they implement the treatment. And it just happens that in this study, the treatment was DRO. That's why I, I um, um, decided to present um, this study to you guys, or these portions of it, so you can understand. So this is the results of their trial-based functional analysis for Jacob. It is graphed differently from what you've seen before, but what you have here, you have on the y-axis the percentage of trials 
uh, with the problem behavior. So they presented trials to see how often the problem behavior would occur during those trials. And as you can see, um, you see the percentage across different conditions. So across adult attention. So if the problem behavior occurred and the, and the adult provided some form of attention, would the behavior occur often in that condition? How about when a peer would give attention? Would the behavior occur often in that condition? And how about scape? What if problem behavior occurred and that produced the removal of whatever task Jacob was engaged in? Now, as you can see, you, you should be looking at the black bars. The gray bars are control conditions, so that's when the behavior shouldn't be occurring very often. Um, but let's just compare all the black bars. Notice that um, problem behavior occur most often, uh, about 90% of the time, um, during the trials in which problem behavior produced adult attention. And when adult attention was just, you know, um, given freely, as you can see, be problem behavior doesn't occur in the control condition. So um, that led the um, experimenters to conclude that problem behavior was maintained by the attention that um, Jacob was uh, producing by his um, uh, teachers. Well, then they decided to then utilize a differential reinforcement of other behavior procedure to reduce um, Jacob's calling out. So let's see what they did. So first, calling out was happen every often, right? It was happen quite often. So they had to choose a DRO interval of two minutes. What does it mean to choose a DRO interval of two minutes? So the DRO interval is their interval time between reinforcers. So that means a reinforcer will be delivered to Jacob every two minutes, as long as, of course, he doesn't engage in the problem behavior. Now, why two minutes and not um, you know, one minute? How about, how, um, why not 10 minutes? It's going to depend a little how often the problem behavior was occurring. If problem behavior was occurring on average, let's say every three minutes. So every three minutes on average, Jacob calls out. Like he, he starts raising his voice without permission. If he's doing it every three minutes and we really want to reinforce the absence of the problem behavior, if I decide to pick an interval that is longer than three minutes, um, let's say, um, okay, let's deliver the reinforcer every four minutes. What's going to happen? You're going to start your timer and you're going to wait four minutes to deliver the reinforcer. But of course, Jacob is going to engage in the problem behavior in about three minutes. If he engages in the problem behavior, you can't give the reinforcer. So you won't be able to give the reinforcer because Jacob engaged in the problem behavior, right? Um, and so then you start your timer again and uh, you remember you wanna wait three minutes or, um, and if Jacob engages in problem behavior before, that's a problem. So you're never gonna be able to deliver the reinforcer. So if Jacob engages in the problem behavior every three minutes, it is best to have a DRO interval that is shorter than the average interval um, between problem behaviors during your baseline. So if Jacob is engaging the problem behavior every three minutes on average, well, let's pick an interval that is shorter, like every two minutes. Why? Because if I'm delivering the reinforcer every two minutes, then I have the opportunity to give the reinforcer to Jacob in the absence of the problem behavior, right? Because he won't engage in the problem behavior until minute three. So at minute two, he wouldn't be engaging in problem behavior, which is great because I can deliver the reinforcer and then wait another two minutes in the absence of problem behavior. And then hopefully um, Jacob won't engage in it and then get the reinforcer and so forth. So here, clearly Jacob was engaging in problem behavior um, in a high rate because they had to choose a two minute interval meaning we're gonna deliver the reinforcer to Jacob every two, minute, two minutes because possibly he's engaging in problem behavior every, every two and a half second, every two and a half uh, minutes or three minutes or so, something like that. So again, what did they do? They chose this two minute interval and then the teacher, remember, he's a typically developing five-year-old boy. So the teacher told Jacob that if he did his work consistently without calling out for two minutes, he would have access to a particular consequence. 
So what did the experimenters, experimenters do in this situation? Remember, there was some problem behavior in uh, uh, peer attention, a lot of problem behavior in the adult attention. So what the experimenters did is they had two conditions. One condition was the adult attention that every two minutes in the absence of problem behavior, then Jacob would get access to a teacher and be able to talk to the teacher for about 30 seconds. During the peer attention condition, if Jacob did not engage in the problem behavior for the full two minutes, then at the end of that two minutes, then he would have access to a preferred peer and could talk to the peer for about 30 seconds. Now remember, he had to not engage in the problem behavior for two seconds, and then he would either have access to an adult or have access to a peer, depending on the condition. If Jacob engaged in the problem behavior during those two minutes, then what happened? Well, the behavior produced no consequence, so um, the experimenters or the teachers ignored Jacob, and the interval was reset. So let's say um, the teacher is waiting two minutes, right? So I'm going to start the timer. I'm the teacher. I'm going to start the timer, and I have to wait two minutes to deliver the reinforcer for Jacob. Again, as long as he doesn't engage in the problem behavior. So one minute go by, goes by, no problem behavior. I have to wait two minutes to deliver the reinforcer. Now at one minute, 45 seconds, Jacob engages in the problem behavior. What happens? Well, I don't deliver the reinforcer. I ignore Jacob and then I reset my clock and I start the timer again. So he misses the opportunity to get the reinforcer the timer starts again. Now notice if Jacob engages in the problem behavior now at one minute, 30 seconds, again, he doesn't get the reinforcer and I reset the timer, which starts again. So if he engages in problem behavior uh, before the two minute elapses, he keeps resetting the timer, postponing the delivery of the reinforcer. He might never get the reinforcer. He needs to wait two minutes with no problem behavior in order to receive the reinforcer. So again, if he engages in the problem behavior before the end of the two seconds, um, the behavior produces no consequence and the interval is reset. Um, here's the cool thing, typically developing kids, right? So Jacob actually is given a timer so he can keep track of the interval, right? So he knows when the reinforcer is coming um, so he can kind of wait and not engage in the problem behaviors. Like, so essentially he may be able to look at the timer and be like, okay, I need to be quiet for those two minutes and then I get the reinforcer and then the timer starts again and then I have to be quiet. So if I'm quiet, if I'm not calling out, if I'm not engaging the problem behavior, I'm gonna get adult attention or I'm gonna get peer attention um, every two minutes, right? And that's uh, what they did. Now let's see what happens. Now this graph shows the percentage of intervals with the problem behavior and um, response per minute during baseline and interventions. Now um, notice here, oops, um, that what you have is, uh, what's happening here? Here we go. I don't know, I'm touching the mouse and, and, and things start moving. So here's um, the call out per minute. Now, this is the amount of times that the behavior was occurring during baseline. So notice it was occurring almost three times um, per minute, right? So that was occurring a lot during the sessions. Now, what they did, remember, is they either gave, uh, and you don't know which one, which one is which, so I want you to guess. One of these is adult attention. The other one is peer attention. Remember what was the hypothesis here? That adult attention was uh, maintaining the problem behavior. So if adult attention is being given in the absence of problem behavior, so as long as problem behavior doesn't occur, you get adult attention um, or you get peer attention, which one do you think is gonna work the best? Well, you guessed it, adult attention. That's what it is. So when adult attention is given uh, contingent upon the absence of problem behavior, problem behavior goes down, right? So he is not engaging in the problem behavior because by not engaging in the problem behavior, 
he has access to uh, adult attention every two minutes. If he engages in the problem behavior, then he's not going to have access to the reinforcer or, or to the adult attention. And you see a little bit of a decrease when peer attention is given contingent upon the absence of problem behavior, but it's not that different from um, baseline, suggesting, as if we saw earlier, that adult attention is really what maintains the problem behavior as according to the functional analysis, right? So you see adult attention here, Beh problem behavior occurs in uh, when adult attention is delivered, it occurs the most in under this condition, leading you to conclude that adult attention is responsible for the calling out behavior. And then of course, when they deliver adult attention for the absence of problem behavior, then problem behavior actually decreases, right? Now, I apologize for my um, slides moving. Um, I'm, I'm not going to start over again just because of that. Okay, um, that's cool. Now, when you have DRO, you may have two kinds of DRO. There's some variations of those kinds, but I'm not gonna talk about those variations. I'm just gonna tell you about those two general strategies of using DRO. The first one is whole interval. So I'll talk about whole interval or momentary interval. What I just gave, the example that I just gave you with Jacob is an example of whole interval. Why is that? Because with Jacob, the problem behavior had to be absent for the whole two minutes for the reinforcer to be delivered. So again, Jacob would only have access to an adult which is the reinforcer, would only have access to adult attention as a form of reinforcement if he did not engage in problem behavior for the whole interval. That's why it is, it, it's called whole interval DRO. So during whole interval DRO, the first thing that the experimenter does or the therapist does is establish a standard interval time. And again, you decide on that interval based on how often problem behavior is occurring. Then you deliver the reinforcer at the end of the interval, right? If, only if, behavior did not occur during the whole interval, right? That's why it's called whole interval DRO. If the problem behavior doesn't occur throughout the whole two minutes, you can deliver the reinforcer at the end of the two minutes and then start again. Start the timer again, two minutes with no reinforcement, deliver the reinforcer, uh, two minutes with no problem behavior, deliver the reinforcer. Start the timer again, two minutes without problem behavior, deliver the reinforcer. And that's essentially um, what happens. Then if the problem behavior uh, occurs, you have to begin an inter interval. So you reset the timer, right? So if the problem behavior occurs before the two minute elapse, you reset the timer. Hopefully this is clear, whole interval, um, DRO. If you have any questions or if you need any additional examples or if you want to think of an example and post on the discussion board so I can check to see if your example is correct, you can do that. Now, um, one of the things that is important, and I think that's the case with all the different kinds of DRO, the intervals can be thinned. Right, so maybe initially we started with Jacob with two, two minutes without problem behavior. So he gets the reinforcer every two minutes. Well, as he starts meeting the requirement, right? So if he can um, not engage in the problem behavior for a whole two minutes, if he can be quiet and not call out for two minutes, then maybe now he has to wait four minutes with no problem behavior to get the reinforcer. And then once he can consistently uh, or we see a consistent reduction in problem behavior during those four minutes, then we can now thin the schedule to six minutes. Now he needs to wait six minutes to get the reinforcer without problem behavior, right? So eventually, as you can see, notice that you're thinning the schedule. So eventually he can go through a whole period, a whole class without engaging in the problem behavior. So, right, so you're slowly sort of thinning the schedule of your DRO. Um, how about momentary DRO? Now with the momentary DRO, 
Um, and the term momentary, if you remember, we talked about momentary time sampling as a way of collecting data in the beginning of the semester. So see, this is about the same, right? So here, the problem behavior needs to be absent at the end of the interval, right? So you only observe the individual, you only take data on the behavior at the end of the interval. It doesn't matter what happens throughout the interval. So in this way, it would be um, you wait two minutes and at the end of the, 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 when the timer goes off, right, when you reach two minutes, you look and if there's no problem behavior at that time, you deliver the reinforcer. It doesn't matter what happened during the interval. It doesn't matter what happened uh, during the whole interval. It only matters what happens at the moment of the observation. At the end of the interval is when you observe. If problem behavior is happening, you reset and start again, don't deliver the reinforcer and you start again. But if there's no problem behavior at the moment that you observe, then you can deliver the reinforcer. So essentially what you're doing is you're establishing a standard interval of time, just like you did with the whole interval, again, based on how often the problem behavior is occurring. And then you observe the participant at the moment that the interval ends. So if the standard interval time uh, was two minutes, like it was done with Jacob in the study that I presented, then you're gonna observe the participant only at the moment that the interval ends. So at the end of the two, two minute interval, I'm gonna observe Jacob and I'm going to deliver the reinforcer if he's not engaging in the problem behavior. If he is engaging in the problem behavior, then I do what I did before, which, um, which would be resetting the timer, not delivering the reinforcer and resetting the timer. Now, interestingly enough, this procedure is generally not as effective as the whole interval DRO. And possibly because a lot of the times this procedure has some sort of cue or signal that the reinforcer is coming. Why? Imagine if you're a kid engaging in problem behavior um, and I'm delivering the reinforcer at the end of the interval. You can engage in problem behavior during the whole interval as long as you don't engage in problem behavior at the end of the interval. So you can, if you can figure out when the end of the interval is, you can just go nuts, engage in a lot of problem behavior. And then as soon as you realize, okay, the reinforcer is going to come soon, I'm gonna be quiet, you're gonna be quiet, just wait for the reinforcer. And that might happen because um, the, the, the teacher may, at the end of the two minutes, let's say the teacher is looking at the clock and then it's gonna, it's, the timer is gonna go off, it's two minutes, that's when I'm supposed to give the reinforcer. I'm gonna reach for the reinforcer uh, when I see that my timer is at one minute, 50 seconds. I'm gonna reach for the reinforcer. Jacob is gonna see it, then Jacob is gonna be very quiet. And then as soon as the timer goes off, Jacob is, Jacob is gonna be quiet and then he's gonna get the reinforcer. So Jacob can learn, I can go nuts for one minute and 59 seconds. As long as I'm quiet at minute two, um, then I'm gonna get the reinforcer because my teacher is only gonna pay attention to me when that timer goes off. So as long as I'm quiet when the timer goes off, um, I'm fine. And that's the other thing too. Maybe it's not even reaching for the reinforcer. Maybe the teacher has a timer and then um, Jacob is gonna be able to um, you know, discriminate when the timer goes off. Well, the timer goes off, I just need to be quiet and then I get a reinforcer, right? So as long as Jacob is not going nuts, um, when the timer goes off, he's gonna get the reinforcer. And for that reason, um, the momentary DRO may not be um, the most effective way of reducing um, problem behavior. Now, why is it that DRO procedures work? There are a variety of reasons. Um, they have been described in the literature um, and studied in the literature. First of all, presenting the reinforcer uh, may reduce the motivation to engage in the problem behavior. So in the case of Jacob, if problem behavior was occurring um, to get adult attention, if you're giving adult attention to Jacob every two minutes, well, he doesn't need to engage in the problem behavior to get it. He's getting it every two minutes. So he's gonna be less motivated to engage in the problem behavior, right? So you're reducing the motivation to engage in the problem behavior by giving Jacob um, the reinforcers or whatever it is that he wants or he needs so he doesn't have to engage in problem behavior to get it. 
Second point here, there is a disruption in the response reinforcer contingency. So essentially there's extinction, right? So in the case again of Jacob, uh, if adult attention is being given in the absence of problem behavior, not in the presence of problem behavior, then problem behavior is not producing the reinforcer, right? Um, the absence of problem behavior is. So the fact that problem behavior stops producing the reinforcer, that is uh, the definition of extinction, isn't it? The problem behavior no longer produces the reinforcer, therefore undergoes extinction. So this could be, there could be some extinction going on in the DRO procedure. Also, every time problem behavior occurs, it delays reinforcement. So the problem behavior actually produces something. Problem behavior produces the postponement of reinforcement. It's like, I'm going to get the reinforcer um, every two minutes. But if I engage in problem behavior, then I'm going to delay the reinforcer. The reinforcer is going to be delayed by two minutes. If I engage in problem behavior, it's going to be delayed by another two minutes. If I engage in problem behavior, it's going to be delayed. So my problem behavior, the problem behavior produces postponement of the reinforcement. This kind of delaying or this kind of postponement may suppress behavior as a form of punishment. Now, we haven't talked about punishment yet, but think about that as a form of penalty or a form of punishment. The problem behavior produces delay, delaying the reinforcer, and that could reduce the problem behavior, suppress problem behavior. Also, when you're delivering the reinforcer every two minutes, as long as the problem behavior doesn't occur, well, the reinforcer can be delivered in the contingent upon other behaviors, right? That's why it's called differential reinforcement of other behavior, because you're reinforcing anything as long as it's not the problem behavior. So you may be reinforcing other behaviors because you're gonna give the reinforcer to Jacob, for example, every two minutes. Well, it's possible that when the interval goes off and then if Jacob is not engaging in problem behavior, well, he might be engaging in something else. What is he engaging in? Well, he might be reading, he might be quiet, um, paying attention to the teacher and you're gonna deliver the reinforcer immediately after that. So you might be reinforcing those behaviors, right? And in, if that's the case, then those behaviors are going to occur more often and the problem behavior occur less often, right? So in that sense, the DRO here kind of looks like a DRA because you're reinforcing uh, some behavior that may be incompatible with the problem behavior. So again, uh, there might be many reasons why the DRO is effective. Um, it may reduce the motivation. It may have some extinction component because it is disrupting the contingency, it may have some punishment component because it delays the uh, presentation of the problem behavior, delays the presentation of the reinforcer, and also it may have some sort of DRA component because other behaviors are being reinforced um, and those can be disrupting um, the problem behavior. So finally, uh, what do clinicians do or what do people do when they're trying to implement the DRO? Well, they first have to identify the reinforcer for the problem behavior. So with any intervention, functional based intervention that we are discussing uh, up to this point in the class, we need to do a functional assessment or an experimental functional analysis to identify why the problem behavior is occurring. What is the reinforcer for the problem behavior? Because that's what you're going to manipulate. You're going to manipulate the reinforcer for the problem behavior, which is essentially the reason why the problem behavior is occurring in the first place then you're going to identify the reinforcer to use in your DRO procedure. Now, most of you are saying, well, isn't that why you identify the reinforcer for the problem behavior? So you can use the same, the reinforcer in the DRO. Yes, um, at least theoretically, that's what you wanna do. So in the example that I gave, we talked about Jacob, remember? They did a functional assessment, they did a, fun a trial-based functional analysis and they found Jacob engages in the problem behavior um, can, uh, because of adult attention. So adult attention is what maintains the problem behavior. Therefore, we are going to use adult attention in the DRO. So they, they identify adult attention um, as the function of the problem behavior as the number one here on this list. And then when they move to number two, they use adult attention as the reinforcer. But what if? you're thinking about what if you have a behavior in which you have no control over the reinforcer? Remember, we talked about some automatically reinforced behaviors. So let's imagine um, 
I, I engage in some behavior such as um, uh, pressing um, or, or squeezing my eyes or pressing my eyes. I, I do something like that because when I do it, I see, you know, stars, right? Um, and I've actually worked with a couple of clients that did that. So they would produce their own visual stimulation. They would just, you know, touch their eyes, press their eyes, and then they would see, you know, um, something. I mean, I'm not recommending that you do it, but if you were to press your eyes, you, you know, just, just uh, see some, some things, right? So there's some visual stimulation. Um, and notice that that's the reinforcer. If I, every time I press my eyes, I squeeze my eyes, I, you know, I see like little stars. Now, I don't, I cannot use that as the rainfall. I cannot deliver that contingent upon um, uh, the absence of problem behavior. So I cannot use that reinforcer. So what can I use instead? What can I do? Well, I can try to get something that is similar. I can give um, the client some, you know, um, videos to watch or maybe something that has a lot of movement. Um, I can give a toy that has, you know, produces some visual stimulation with some lights and something like that. Or I can just give a very powerful reinforcer. You know what? Maybe I do a reinforcer assessment and I find out that the kid loves the iPad. So how about we deliver the iPad um, as long as the kid doesn't engage in the problem behavior? So let's use the iPad. So the problem behavior is maintained by automatic reinforcement, but because I cannot deliver automatic reinforcement, um, during my DRO interval, in this case, I'm going to deliver a very powerful reinforcer that hopefully is more powerful than the automatic reinforcer. So in this case, maybe I'll deliver the iPad. Now I'm going to choose the interval. When, how often would I deliver the iPad? Well, if the kid is pressing her eye um, every five minutes, then I want to give the iPad in less than five minutes because I want to catch the kid not engaging in the problem behavior. So I'm gonna give the iPad, let's say on average every four minutes, right, in this case. So I'm gonna choose my DRO interval based on the rate of problem behavior during baseline. So again, based on the baseline rates of problem behavior so the participant can contact reinforcement. Then if the problem behavior occurs, I'm going to use extinction. In the case of Jacob, problem behavior was adult attention. So if engaged in problem behavior, not only the interval reset, but he didn't get any adult attention. So his behavior was ignored. In my example here of the kid pressing um, his or her eye, eyes, then I can use extinction in this case, right? So this case extinction is not gonna be possible. So all I can do is minimize reinforcement for the problem. Um, maybe we should not you know, talk to the kid or ignore the kid, but at the same time, there's not much I can do if the behavior is maintained by automatic reinforcement. The kid is going to press her eyes and is going to produce um, the visual stimulation. Then we're going to deliver the reinforcer for the absence of the problem behavior in each interval. So in the example that I'm just giving you, um, if the interval is, let's say, um, every, I forget what I said, every three minutes, um, then um, if problem behavior does not occur throughout the whole interval of three minutes, if it's a whole interval DRO, then I'm going to deliver the reinforcer at the end of the, um, at the, at the, end of the interval. If the behavior occurs during the interval, then I'm going to not deliver the reinforcer, ignore the behavior, and then start the timer again. So kid doesn't get the reinforcer, doesn't get the iPad, and I have to wait another three minutes in the absence of problem behavior for the iPad to be delivered. And then of course, I want to gradually increase the interval. If the kid is very successful and doesn't engage in problem behavior during the three minute interval for several intervals, then maybe now we're gonna wait four minutes and then five minutes and so forth. So then the kid can go a very long period of time without engaging in problem behavior. Um, and in the case of the study that I showed you earlier too, um, instructions were given. Remember, the experimenter told the kid, like, I want you to work. I want you to not engage in the problem behavior. This is when the reinforcer is going to be delivered. And here's a timer. So if the, if the client can understand you, then of course you want to use instructions to maximize the effectiveness of your procedure. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to uh, finish today and I would like to talk about DRL or differential reinforcement of low rates of responding 
uh, on Wednesday. Some of you are asking me about the PowerPoint. I'm including a lot of those articles um, throughout um, um, my, uh, uh, as I'm preparing class. Uh, and I still have to add a few examples of DRL in this PowerPoint. I'm gonna try to do this as soon as I can. So this is posted prior to lecture on Wednesday so you can uh, review the PowerPoint prior to the exam on Friday. Now, some of you are emailing me about the final paper for the class. I already announced it. There will be no final paper. I'm adjusting the syllabus. So you guys don't have to do a final paper. You just have your exams, the, the, the class assignments. There was one uh, on Friday, right? Some questions, practice questions on functional analysis or functional assessment and extinction. So you guys did that uh, already for this week. So you're gonna, your grade is gonna be based on your exams and the in-class assignments. Some of you are asking me about extra credit. So those that participated in research will be uh, getting extra credit. And there's also an opportunity for an alternative assignment, which is also posted on, um, um, it's posted on Canvas, but I'll be um, sending announcements about that. So don't worry much. Um, and then lastly, I just wanted to do something kind of fun. I mean, everyone is at home and, and stuck at home. Um, I figure that if someone is watching this video, um, uh, you know, many years from now, right? So if this video is posted on YouTube and now it's no longer the spring of 2020 um, and people are watching this video, they're gonna, there's a lot of references to what's happening in the world right now. Um, and we're all stuck at home because of the pandemic. So it might not make a lot of sense, some of the things that I'm saying, if you're watching this video, you know, several years from now. Um, but if you're watching the video now for the class, um, then you're probably stuck at home and uh, life could be a little boring. So I'm sure you're being listening to some music. So what I like to know is what you've been listening to. So maybe in the discussion for this class, you know, ask some questions, uh, of course, about differential reinforcement, but let me know uh, what kind of music you've been listening to. And then next class, I'll tell you what I've been listening to. And maybe there's some music that you like that I also like, or maybe there's something that you like that I don't know about. And maybe I'll decide that I like it and then I'll let you know and I'll thank you for recommending something new. So um, yeah, so in the discussion board, uh, post something that you've been listening to or maybe a recommendation, something that you think that I'm, I might like, that you like, that I, I might like as well. Anyway, I will see you guys um, sometime um, soon, hopefully, but um, through YouTube, I'll see you on Friday. Okay. Bye, everyone.